I'm fine. Uh, uh, so and we can start, on. right? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, I mean, is... you pretty much know the drill. Everyone watching the show now already knows the drill. Vidianos is going to read the questions. If you want to read the question on your own, you can open up the pad. Otherwise, Vidianos will be reading the questions and answering them in line. And I'll be uh, making jazz in the background whenever something doesn't work. So, Vidianos, the floor is yours. OK. So do you use fleeting notes as well? Do you keep them in order? Um, fleeting notes are a very interesting subject. Um, in the initial draft of this talk, I want to include fleeting notes as well, but it would take a bit too long, so I said, let's not do it. Um, I'm going to add a link here to my dot files and a section for fleeting notes, but I can very quickly share my screen for a moment and show you some things about it. So give me a moment. Um, yes, you can. You can do this. Okay. So you see the screen now, I think. Yes, I confirm. We can see it. And um, so I have a key binding which opens my daily note. I have some notes from other talks in EmacsConf and talks that I I'm going to miss due to the two tracks. Don't mind them. So I write like, for example. Um, fleeting note, fleeting note, and I have a command bound here which will automatically give it a to do value. So let's say, for example, I'm processing it, it adds a tag to the current, pro pro current projects node, which is essentially a node I have for um, things I want to do right now. It makes it an orgram node, and then I can um, write something here blah 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 and if i go on program node find um actually i need to save it first it will appear here and then once i say it's done it is not a node anymore it is removed here this allows me to archive things um i can stop the sharing now this allows me to archive and um, fleeting nodes so I don't need so because um, fleeting notes are not something that needs to remain my cell casting. They just I want them for some point and then deleting them. And this is done with org journal and not orgram dailies because with org journal I can have this that I make it a node and then I remove it from a node. While I don't think you can do that with orgram dailies. And the code for all of this is in the section I pasted on the etherpad. So, and if you have any questions, you can email me. Okay. Uh, sorry, Vidyanos, just to specify, all the contact information will be available on the talk page. So be it the uh, the email to Vidyanos, also the pads, the recording, everything will be available after the conference as soon as we have the bandwidth for this. So that's where you'll be able to find contact information. Okay, you can keep going, Vidyanos. Sorry for the interruption. Okay, so the, and the second question is, if it works for PDFs only or Word and Excel or EBUB, website, CWW and YouTube. Um, so I'm not sure, give me a moment to look at org order and see if it says, so, because honestly, I don't remember, use it with PDFs typically, but I think it yes. works with other things as well. Okay. Uh, from the top of my mind, I think uh, Orgnota works with EPUB file via the package nov.el that is managed, I think, by... Was it by Wasamasa? I can't remember, actually, now. But at some point, it was managed by Wasamasa. Uh, it was probably watching right now and probably yelling at me in the background, so I'll keep you posted on this. <laughs> but yes, uh, the uh, Orgnota allows you mo mostly to take notes on PDF via PDF view, but it also allows you to take notes on EPUB. And they're relatively working, working relatively well. But as for yeah, the I, other, yeah, go on, Vidianos. I opened Org Noter, and it says it also is compatible with Doc View for Office, so Word, Excel, and things like that. Yeah, and otherwise, you know, if you really want to take notes on such documents, you can probably use either Org Convert or Pandoc to generate a document that would be editable within uh, Org Noter. It shouldn't be too difficult to do so. And usually, uh, it's mostly PDFs when you're working on research stuff or stuff like this. Anyway, yeah. sorry for inserting. This is a, a topic very dear to my heart as well, because as you know, I have worked <laughs> a little bit with Orgram, so and Org Noter especially. Yeah, um, so yeah, I think you should be able to do Word, Excel, and DPUB. 
Uh, I don't think it works with websites and it definitely doesn't work with videos. Not sure if there's other solutions for those. I believe there is one. Sorry, I, I keep I keep inserting myself into the discussion. This is a very interesting topic. Uh, I think Alpha Papa developed uh, an org package to capture a web page. So it's like an org capture, you know, org protocol that allows you to capture stuff yeah. from your browser, but it allows you to capture a page and basically it pen docs the results into an HTML. Well, no, sorry, it pen docs from HTML to an org document with a structure and a hierarchy, and this way you can actually take notes on the documents and and just uh, have all the features you would expect in a normal document. Uh, I'll shut up now. This is your talk, not mine. If I really wanted to talk about this, I should have made a talk. Anyway, back don't to you. Don't worry, don't worry. For the things that I don't know myself, it's good to have someone else that has the knowledge on the topic. Okay, I'm good to be a resource then. <laughs> I'm happy to be a resource. Sorry. Okay, so next one. I used to take notes of PDF with OrgNoder, but the Zotero PDF reader is also very nice. So, okay, yeah, I have seen that there's a Zotero PDF reader. It does look nice as well, I would agree, but I have two problems with it. Um, one, Emacs key bindings don't work, and two, it's not Emacs. <laughs> Basically, I I think it's it's nice, but I, th I want to use things that are outside Emacs for as little as possible. And I use it there because I haven't found a way in Emacs to save the article somewhere and download the PDF automatically. I know there is um, DOI utils, which was mentioned in IRC uh, a few moments ago as well, but it hasn't worked perfectly for me in the past when I tried it. So I use it for that, but I wouldn't use it for the PDF reader as well because I want to use it in Emacs. Um, next one. Uh, thanks for saying that it was a great presentation. The, my thoughts on the future of Zellkasten. I think Zellkasten has a bright future, personally, because um, it is plain text. Plain text will never go away, basically. You, you will be able to use it forever. And also, Orgrom is open source with a very vibrant community, so that won't go away either anytime soon, I think. So it probably has a has a future if you mean it that way if you mean that way. And I think that in general it is a noting method that is very efficient. I have used it for university the past few years. And I have right now like 850 notes on it and they will probably only keep increasing. So I don't think it's going away. If you want me, if you want to ask anything else, I can, we can talk more about it. Actually, I, I do have something to add to this uh, particular point because um, on the topic of the uh... Zellocast and how useful it can be. Now, it's been a little while, you know, since Zellocast and really started exploding. We, I think in 2020, right when COVID started, you know, a lot of people started getting interested in Zellocast and method. And, you know, ever since, you know, you have a lot of software that were released, including the ones we have in Orgrom and all the, you know, I'm going to use Orgrom because of the one I'm most familiar with as a container, but we also have, you know, uh, denote by uh, Prot and other solution as well. Yeah. Um, and one thing that I'm currently working on and a key area of interest for me is how do we use the concept of a Zellocaston, a collection of notes. Generally, when you think of a Zellocaston, it's a really individual collection of notes, right? It's something that you have. It's the stuff that you find during your research, during the paper that you read. But how about trying to have a slip box for a group of people so that they could start sharing notes on research that they do it wouldn't you know it wouldn't be the same thing as a personal slip box because you can think of it as the knowledge bank for a group of people where they keep track of the concept that they use within their organization the patterns that they like to use when they work together so we actually wanted to do a talk this year uh, on some of those adjacent topics, but sadly, uh, we were a little taken by time and you'll have to wait for next year. But there are, I will agree with you, Vidianos, there's a lot of very interesting stuff abound for the Zellocaston method and especially Zellocaston 
inside Emacs. All right, back to you now. Yeah, thanks for the additions. I like them as well. And I think um, the what you said about collaboration, it would be very interesting, really. Great. The only problem is having other people using the same methods with you. <laughs> Uh, sorry, uh, Vidiano. I'm not sure if you asked me a question. I, I was I had a, a health whispering in my ear in the background at the same time. I just said that I really like the idea that you said about collaboration. Yeah, because it is what really something that is missing when you think about it. Like the good thing about Emacs and the philosophy of Emacs generally is that you know we have different modes working together. And they do one thing or multiple things, and they do it very well. We have org mode for editing structured document. We have maggot to manage repositories. We have, you know, calc to do calculations with a uh, polish notation and whatnot. And it feels like we have a great tool for collaboration, editing a singular buffer, which is CRDT, which we've already talked about before. I'm not sure if we've had a. We did have a presentation on Emacs Conf about CRDT. I think if you want, if you're more interested into this, go back to the talk uh, I did last year with Joe Connelly and Nora Lassan on uh, Emacs Research Group. We did demonstrate what CRDT was. So we have a very good tool for working on a buffer, and we have a very good way to take notes. Why not try to combine the two tools like Emacs is so good at doing? We take one mode, we take another mode, we clash them together and we do something very interesting with them. Well, we should probably do, be doing something similar with notes taking so that people can actually start building notes together. And I think that would be a really key step in the future. But anyway, I think I'm re repeating, repeating myself a little bit and I don't want to say too much right now. You'll see it in the future. It's coming months or coming okay, years. Okay. You're not in a Russian plus. Okay, Vidyan, it's back to you now. Okay, so how do you find a way to get a nice overview of multiple nodes to rearrange them? Like physically putting many small nodes in a, at a table and rearranging them? So my initial idea when I tried to make Zelle Desk was to get as close as possible to this. Have a lot of small nodes in my table and be able to rearrange them. Due to org mode being text, this is not exactly possible, but... Um, I don't know if this question was before the third demo or not. Um, what I showed in that demo, I think, um, is to an extent showed what I do for rearranging that you add all the things you want on the Zelda scratch buffer and then rearrange them however you want. And so that's as close as I have been able to get to that. It's not perfect, but I think it is all right for um, being text, which um, making it, making it um, graphically it would be hard, I think. And next one seems to be a follow-up on that question. Yeah, and um, says it's difficult or impossible to do that. Yeah, I agree. Um, okay. Um, so, this package that you say in the next one, on the next question, the, I, I will check this link out. It seems very interesting for for making a, for writing your notes in a big canvas. I think it would definitely make sense for my workflow to use something like this if it is what I have understood you mean it is. I would love to try it and we'll get back to you if you want, um, whoever left that message, if you want to leave any con contact information and, or talk to me, I would love to get back to you about this because it looks very interesting. Yeah, so again, all the contact information will be available on the talk page. By the way, if you're worried about the lighting changes in my place, it's just that sometimes <laughs> I am very, I have a lot of light in my face. And then when I'm a little tired, I do rest like this. And it's... Uh, <laughs> It's very different, but it's still me. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm not going to turn it off because every time it's like a flashbang going into my eyes. Uh, so if you want to yeah. talk to Vidianos afterwards, do maybe do not leave your coordinates right into the pad. You know, maybe get in touch with uh, Vidianos instead. Yeah. You know, those ads are going to be public eventually, and even though we will be reviewing all the content within them, it means that they will be open to people for a while. So maybe avoid putting personal information over there. 
But otherwise, you'll be able to connect after the conference relatively easily and Vidianos will be able to follow up or even just on the questions whenever you have the time. But it might take one or two weeks, you know, for the speakers to get back to the questions you put into the pad. We will be uh, asking them frequently. We do have this policy, as you know, with Emacs Conf of nudging speakers to do something. So we will nudge mm -hmm. speakers towards answering your questions, but it might take us about one or two weeks to get all the answers. Uh, I think we don't have any more questions currently. There um, is one more. You have... Oh, there is one more, so please take it. Um, can we use Zettel Custom for coding too, especially when using the IDEs like Visual Studio and Excel? So I can't say for sure if you can, if you can use it because I'm not in coding. I, the, only, the, the language I know the best for coding is Emacs Lisp, and the only other one I know is MATLAB for I'm doing calculations, for example, for things in university. But I think you should be able to do that. If you look for Zellcasten for coding, you will probably find some resources for it. Shouldn't I don't think it breaks the um, Zellcasten principles. Like you can no, make small... Okay. You can make um, atomic nodes for coding concepts. So should work, I believe. Yeah, and I can actually confirm this. You know, I I, I did share to you, with you before in one of the previous Q and A uh, how we're taking note on this little device right there yeah. to do lead code exercises. Well, the thing about lead code exercises is that well, lead code. Sorry, let's be more vague about it. Lead code is a platform and not a free platform as well. And I'm not advertising them. But the concept of data structure and algorithm is really important to programming, and. Usually when you try to solve algorithmic problems, you rely on a number of patterns that have been developed by, um, sorry, I, I get people telling me to my right here that, oh, the sum is going down. And so it, this, my stomach is falling into my, <laughs> my body, just, oh, what happened? Anyway, going back to the point, uh, we do rely on patterns and identification of patterns within a problem. So as a result, it would be very much possible to create separate notes for all these patterns and you can have different exercises and say you have an exercise that is using two different things it's using a tree pattern and it's using a depth of search if none of neither of those two words make any sense to you do not worry and be grateful because this will haunt you at night otherwise but it would be very i think it would be a prime candidate really for atomization and linking within the Zettel Kasten because it would make it so much easier to structure your knowledge in a way that is organic rather than hierarchical so yeah, this is a this was a very good question, and uh, I'd be okay, happy to encourage the uh, asker to try it on their own and maybe make a presentation next year at the next Emacs Conf. Mm -hmm. Avidianos, before we continue, I just want to give up the heads up. So we have opened the room currently. If you want to join uh, the room with Vidianos, you we have posted the link on ISC, and if you go to the talk page of Vidianos talk, you will be able to join the room as well. We did have quite a number of questions, so feel free to join. Uh, in about four minutes, we'll need to move on to the next talk. But, um, well, actually, I'll give you about three more minutes. Uh, do we have any more questions on the pad, Vidianos? So I'm looking um, on the pad, no. I'm looking at my RC. Um, yeah. Someone says if zeldas.dl will be available in Melpa. Um, it is on Melpa right now. You can find it. Right, and uh, you just have to... Sorry, my voice is getting raspier. It's only the first day of Emacs Conf. It's not even lunch, and I'm already losing my voice. This is not building well for the rest. Um, but yeah, you should be able to find it pretty easily by looking on DogDogGo for Melpa and Space and ZLCaston.el, the name of the package. And you'll be able to find it. And we can put it on the page. I'm pretty sure it's already on your talk page with Yannis as well. So, yeah, it is uh, on the talk page. Yeah, you'll be able to find it really quickly. So we have about two more minutes. Uh, did you see any other question that you'd like to answer as well? Um, I'm scrolling an IRC since the talk started to see if there is any el anything else. Um, I don't see anything else. If anyone I... joins the room here, I would love to continue. If not, then I think we've already answered enough things. Sure, uh, I would. I would concur. You know, we you have covered a lot of ground. 
I am personally happy to be seeing so many talks about Zellocaster. It feels like, you know, I, I was a little bit of a forerunner at the MaxConf talking about Zellocaster. And now we are two years later and we're still talking about it. I know a lot of people are getting a little tired of hearing about Zellocaster all the time. But, you know, if you part all the communication, if you focus on what it actually does, and I keep saying it's just notes and it's just links, then it's actually quite amazing what you can do with it. And it's just, it's just a mental model, really. So I would... We kind of use the, the, you know, uh, sorry for some boxing here, but if you have been interested into Zellocaster at some point, or if you are frustrated by all the talk about Zellocaster that seems to be kind of like a cult at some point, well, I would encourage you maybe to um, try, not necessarily try it yourself, but try to understand really the simple stuff behind it. Because honestly, there's nothing very revolutionary about this note taking method. It's just that. It used to be done with paper, and now it's done with computers, and it makes it a little more easier. Personally, what I find the most helpful in this type of note-taking is how organic everything feels. You do not need to be thinking about the structure from the get-go, and this is extremely freeing. Okay, Vidianos, uh, we are about out of time. Thank you so much for taking the time to answer the questions. Uh, we no will be in touch in the future, and we'll be looking forward to having more presentation about Zolocast, and perhaps maybe one by you in the future. Mm. Yeah, so, thank uh, well, thank you so much. And uh, you know, so I don't see anyone in the room, so feel free to leave the room after we're done. So in about one minute, we're going to go with the next talk. Um, we might go a little, bit, a little bit quiet until the top of the minute. Uh, I need to drink and I need to rest my voice. But in one minute, we'll be starting the next talk. Vidianos, thank you so much and see you next time. Bye.